youth leaders here at Custer United Methodist Church, and I welcome everyone to this worship service. May you find a fellowship both blessing and inspiration. Our church fellowship is always open to all. Please come again. If you do not find a home church, or do not have a home church, please consider joining the Custer United Methodist Church family. Our announcements this morning. Birthdays this week, we have Katie Bigney and Alex Tusk. Remember your daily Bible reflections are on our website. And thank you for your tithes and offerings that you're mailing in. Next Sunday is our 117th anniversary Sunday with Judy Jensen giving us some church history. And this Sunday is our virtual youth service and we hope you enjoy what our youth have helped put together with a lot of help from our group. Next Saturday, June 27th, we're going to have a food bank drop-off from 11 to 12 noon in our back parking lot. You drive through and everything will be safe. Please pray for our church at 9 p.m. each evening to continue to grow in membership and prosperity and in our love for Jesus Christ. Our in-person church service and other gatherings are canceled until further notice. Please see our website. Please keep in mind our church continues to need our donations to pay our bills. We are continuing to pay our staff during this stressful time. Checks can be mailed to Custer UMC at Post Office Box 500, Custer, Washington, 98240. Thank you for your support. Be safe. See you soon. Seek God, know God, trust God, O people. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare God's deeds among the people, for the needy are remembered, the poor have hope. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Gather us in, O Holy One, for we would be your people. Amen. Let's join Paige Leahy again in our passage of praise, Psalm 33, 1-12. The passage of praise this morning is Psalm 33, verse 1-12. Let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Make music for him on the ten-stringed harp. Sing a new song of praise to him. Play skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries, and locked the ocean in vast reservoirs. Let the whole world fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all the schemes. But the Lord's plan stands firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his inheritance. Let us pray. Send us, O oh God, to worship you this day. Remove our needless armor, be our stronghold, grant us calm. Give us joyful hearts and ready minds, that we may be open to your grace. Assure us of your presence once again, that we may trust the mystery of life and growth as we gather in the name of our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. Amen. With special music this morning, we have Cassidy Toy. He's playing for Elise for you.
For our children's moment this morning, we're going to have music by Clara Lane Bloom doing Jesus Loves Me and Cassidy and Lizzie doing Silent Night. Okay, wait, yeah. ready? Are you ready? Set? Go. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me. So. That's all? University. Andrew Cuss is graduating from Ferndale High School and he will be going on to either Arizona or Texas to welding school. Chad Reimer has received his master's degree in engineering from South Dakota Mines and Technology. Now for our concerns. Prayers for Pastor Banks rescheduled surgery for June 26th and Brian Hershey's with his knee surgery this coming Thursday. A litany for Father's Day. For our fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. We pray to the Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and that their family and friends support and comfort them. We pray to the Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us. We pray to the Lord. God our Father, in your wisdom and love you make all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christ's fathers, Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, teacher, bearer of peace, we seek your wisdom. Open our minds to your word and to possibilities yet unseen. Open our hearts to your word in fresh new ways. Amen. Good morning. The first reading can be found in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 1a, 4 through 11, 19 through 23 and 32 through 49. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield-bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? And I, am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? 
Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I, divide, today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before, and David heard him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who has saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew, to near, drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into your hand. When the Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out, to, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. This is the word of God for the people of God. The second reading is from the Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1-13. through 13. This can be found on page 221 in your pew Bibles. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now this is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calmalities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirits, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill, and, in Ill repute and good repute, 
we are treated as imposters and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sor sor sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is open, is wide open for to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The gospel reading can be found in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, subtitled, Jesus Stills a Storm. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and and now, the glory of Padre. Today, our message is the faith of our fathers. So joining me this morning will be some of our youngsters from our youth group, Landon, Laurel, and Megan. And I have a few words I'd like to say about my father. My father's no longer with me and with us and hasn't been for a number of years. He was born in 1923 in Wolf Point, Montana. He grew up in the Missouri River Breaks country, and back in the Depression, when the Depression hit that country, I think it was two years before they heard about it. It didn't change their life much at all. In fact, whenever the Depression hit, they packed up and they went on a road trip for about three years. So, my, it was tough everywhere, but people were getting along as best they could, and my dad grew up in that kind of a lifestyle. They would just go from ranch to ranch and find work where they could and travel. They made it all the way out to British Columbia from eastern Montana and back. So they were quite traveled by the time they, they headed back home. So they eventually they did go back to Montana and uh, my dad from there, he, the war came along in World War II and uh, he joined up and he became become an airborne ranger or a paratrooper. And the reason he did that was because they paid more. They got paid $20 a month more than a regular infantry guy. It was dangerous work, but money was money. So that's what my dad did. And that was the thing that drove him for years was he was working, his work ethic. He did everything that he could to support his family. And he was a, the one thing he taught me about life was if you work, if you want something, you work for it and you can get it. Now, I came along in 1958, and I was the fifth of six kids in our family, so I was, I was just the sixth, the fifth kid. <laughs> there was, a, I had four older brothers and sisters, and uh, they were all working in the family business and stuff when I grew up. So I grew up traveling with my dad. His business was delivering bulk oil and gas throughout our county. Now our county. Sounds like, you know, not too big, you could drive across, drive everywhere in one day, but Montana is the fourth largest state in the Union, and Garfield County is the fourth largest county in the state. It has about 120, 10,000 square miles. It's bigger than Rhode Island. So anyway, my dad, he drove a gas truck. He owned a bulk gas delivery business, and he drove 
all over the county delivering gas. And when he first started after World War II, the gas business wasn't good enough to support him and his growing family. So at night, him and my uncle would take his truck and take the, he had four portable gas tanks that he would put on a flatbed truck, that was his gas truck. They would take those gas tanks off, they would drive 200 miles, load that truck with 10 tons of hay, drive it back home that night, get home, unload that hay, put the gas tank back on and go to work in the morning and go drive the gas truck. So he worked 20 hour days for a year doing that just to support his family because that's, that was the kind of man he was. When I came along, I became his shadow and I got to go with him driving the gas truck all over the county. So. My dad taught me a lot about being a Christian and those trips because he would show me how you treated people and how people treated each other the way Jesus meant it to be. He would schedule his day about where would we stop for lunch, whose ranch would we eat at. He knew all the best cooks in the county and he, the days that he set out his schedule for where we would deliver, he would say, well, we'll do this and we'll go there but we'll have lunch here. So, one day we were down in the countryside, it was quite a ways out of town, in the breaks, and when we were at the ranch and we were going to have lunch at, my dad said, now, these folks, sure, they say a pretty long prayer before we break bread, so it's not like the one we do at home, it's just short and sweet, they, they, they can go on now, so you don't, you be quiet and you just let them do that, and I said, sure, dad, okay. I was four or five, six years old. I wasn't very old, but I can remember it. And so sure enough, we had lunch and they, uh, they said a long prayer. And we all had lunch and we got done and we were leaving the house and uh, me being me, I turned to my dad and I said, yeah, dad, you're right. They do have a long prayer before they eat. <laughs> and uh, he said he's going to go out crawl under his truck. But, uh, but that was the... You know, the, my introduction to other religions and uh, and being uh, thoughtful of them and the ways that they do things. So, and not everybody same, says the same prayer whenever you break bread. Another time, when I was older, my dad taught me the, the lesson about generosity and giving time. And that was, we had a gas station and some people came in from out of town and they'd run out of gas about five miles out of town. Now. That doesn't seem like a lot, you know, five miles out of town, but where we lived, it was 65 miles to the nearest town, and it was no bigger than our town. So their gas stations may or may not be open after 8 o'clock at night. So these people came into town, and they, they needed me to go out and get some gas in their car, and then they came back and they filled up their car, and, and uh, whenever they went to leave, they tried to give my dad some money. And my dad said, no, I don't. I don't need your money, thank you. I sold you a tank of gas, that's all I care about. I don't need a tank. So then they tried to give it to me. And I said, no, thank you. Because my dad said, if he doesn't want it, neither do I. So, and that's what he taught me about. If you, whenever you give somebody something for a price, that's agreed upon, and then that's how you do business. You don't ask for more because you can get it. So. I, I didn't stay with my family much after I was about 21 years old. I, I left, and I left and moved away and never came back. So at that point, I didn't get to see my dad as much as I had when I was growing up. But he would still come and see me occasionally, whenever he could, which wasn't often. And my kids never really got to know him. And that was what, that's really the problem that I have, uh, is that that family, the family is important to me, but my dad was uh, just you know, just couldn't be here. So, but fortunately, right now my family, I don't have that problem with my kids. So I get to see my kids and get to learn and see what they're going to be like when they get older. They're going to be young uh, adults. Well, they are young adults now. They're getting married, so they're 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 adults. Uh, and I look forward to the years coming up where I'll be more than just a father to them, I'll be a grandfather. So, anyway, my dad taught me a lot about being a Christian, uh, but not about 
so much about being an organized Christian, but just following in Jesus' way of treating others like he'd like to be treated. So, so with that, we'll end that service and uh, we'll go on to the kids and let them give their uh, talks about their fathers. So this Sunday is Father's Day, and I wanted to share a few reasons why I appreciate my dad. Um, he always helps me with all of my projects, especially my schoolwork. He'll spend hours working on math with me, making sure I know not only the right answer, but all the ways to solve the problem, and that I really understand what I'm supposed to be working on. And he will talk with me. I always go and see him before night, and we like to watch movies, and... Yeah, I just really love him, and I appreciate how much time he spends with me and how willing he is to help me with all of my stuff. This is my Father's Day present for him. It's our family on a cutting board. I'm Landon, and my father is Devlin Sturdivant, and one thing I really like about my dad is how he willingly serves um, every day. He uh, comes home from work, uh, goes and works out, makes dinner. Every single day, it's consistent. It's easy to do that when you're in a good mood, but sometimes he has bad days too and when you can do that consistently and you're always your heart is always open to serve I think that's like one of the best qualities you can have as a human being hi my name is Laurel and my dad's name is Devlin my dad is really special to me because he is really supportive and encouraging of everything I do he helps around the house like making dinner and mowing the lawn he also is a faithful leader of our family Overall, I am really blessed to have him as my dad. This is for our invitation to offer. With the Apostle Paul, let us not accept the grace of God in vain. With the psalmist, let us praise and rejoice in God, our stronghold of times of trouble and need. In gratitude for what we have received, let us bring our tithes and our offerings. The offertory prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for the many ways that gifts are offered in your service. We especially thank you for fathers and elders who love and with wisdom have touched our lives and our church. Help the elders among us nurture the young in our midst. Help the young among us honor their elders, even as they are true to their own callings. Accept our gifts, we pray, and bless now this morning's offering that we might do your will in this place and in all the world. Amen. Joining us with some more special music, please welcome Megan Rouse. This is It Is Well With My Soul. <laughs> benediction this morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly This is how great thou art.